In a modest but warm home, Yin sat with her uncle, Bomsik, and aunt, Jia, enjoying a simple dinner. Despite the simplicity, the familial bond filled the atmosphere with a comforting warmth. Yin, after dinner, I need to talk to you for a moment, said Bomsik, scooping a bite of food on his spoon. Sure uncle, what's it about? Yin asked, her curiosity piqued. Before the conversation could continue, a loud knock echoed through the front door, followed by the rough voice of a man. Bomsik, open the door. We're here on urgent business. Bomsik froze mid-bite, his face tensed, and his wife looked at him with evident worry. Who is it uncle? Yin asked, her voice tinged with anxiety. Debt collectors, Bomsik whispered, trying to steady himself as he rose to answer the door. When he opened it, two burly men stood on the threshold, their faces radiating impatience and anger, one of them barged in without waiting for an invitation. Bomsik, the man boomed, we've been patient long enough, the debt left by the late Sung Ho must be settled immediately. Yin gasped in shock, my late father, had debts? She murmured, disbelief and confusion flashing across her face. Bomsik tried to reason, his voice pleading, please, give us a little more time, we're trying to gather the money. Trying? That's the same excuse you gave us last month. The man interrupted harshly. His gaze roved around the room until it landed on Yin, lingering uncomfortably. Feeling the weight of his stare, Yin squared her shoulders and addressed him calmly. Sir, my father has passed, and we're doing our best to resolve his obligations. Can't you grant us an extension? The man chuckled derisively. An extension won't pay back a debt this massive young lady. He sneered, tossing a piece of paper onto the table. It displayed an astronomical sum that made Yin's eyes widen in shock. Jia stepped forward, her voice trembling with desperation. We will pay sir, please give us more time. But the man raised a hand to silence her. Enough, if you can't pay within two days, we'll take something of equal value. What do you mean by that? Bomsik asked, panic creeping into his voice. The man smirked cruelly and pointed at Yin, her. A heavy silence fell over the room. Yin stared at the man in disbelief, while Jia immediately stepped in front of her protectively. No, you can't do that, Jia exclaimed, her voice shaking with anger. Why not? You don't have the money. But this girl could be a very valuable guarantee. If the debt isn't cleared in today's, she comes with us, the man declared coldly. You have no right, Yin shouted her voice firm despite her racing heart. We have every right over the debt your father left behind. Don't like it? Then pay up, the man retorted before turning on his heel and leaving with his companion. The oppressive silence returned as the door closed. Bomsik collapsed onto a chair, his face clouded with guilt, while Jia embraced Yin, who was trembling and on the verge of tears. Uncle, auntie, what are we going to do? Yin asked, her voice barely above a whisper. We won't let them take you, Yin, Bomsik said, gripping her hand tightly. We'll find a way. But how, uncle? That debt is too enormous. I don't want to see you both suffer because of this, Yin said, her voice cracking. Your family, Yin, will protect you, no matter what, Jia said resolutely. That night, as they huddled together for solace, Yin made up her mind. If it came to the worst, she would face her fate with dignity, refusing to let fear dictate her actions. Jungkook sat in his luxurious leather chair, his eyes shut tightly as he massaged his temples. Across from him, a middle-aged man in a sharp suit waited patiently, his expression composed. So you're saying I can't access my father's assets unless I marry and have a child? Jungkook finally broke the silence, his voice cold and sharp. The lawyer nodded solemnly. Yes, Mr. Jian, that's the stipulation laid out in your late father's will. Only once you're married and have an heir will the entirety of his estate and the company come under your control. Jungkook let out a frustrated scoff, clenching his fists on the desk. Unbelievable. Even in death, my father finds a way to complicate my life. Perhaps he had his reasons sir. He likely wanted to ensure that you built a stable future before taking on greater responsibilities, the lawyer explained cautiously. But I don't even have a girlfriend, let alone a wife or a child, Jungkook muttered, running his hands through his hair in frustration. The man took a deep breath before continuing. You have six months, Mr. Jian. If within that time frame you fail to meet the requirements, the assets will be transferred to the company's board of commissioners, according to the contingency provisions. Additionally, it is likely that all the assets, except those already allocated to you, will be distributed among your extended family and various social charities. It's not that I don't want to share my father's assets, but giving them all away? That's absurd, he muttered in frustration. Jungkook remained silent, his mind racing to find a solution. After a while, he rose from his chair and walked over to the large window in his office, 
gazing out at the bustling cityscape of Seoul. All right, he finally said, his voice low but firm. I'll get married, but there's no guarantee I'll have a child right away. Naturally, my wife will need time to get pregnant. That's a process. The lawyer allowed a faint smile of relief. The first step is marriage, Mr. Jiang. I trust you'll find a way to meet the rest of the requirements. Jungkook rolled his eyes, then turned to face the man. Leave now. I need time to think about who's crazy enough to marry me. The lawyer stood, bowing politely before leaving the office. Once alone, Jungkook leaned back in his chair, staring at the ceiling. His mind churned with possibilities and strategies. Marriage, who would even want to? He murmured to himself. The door opened, revealing his secretary, Lee, holding a tablet. The man stepped inside, his expression calm and professional. Mr. Jian, is there anything you need? Lee asked politely. Jungkook nodded and gestured for Lee to take a seat. Sit down, I have an important task for you. Lee complied, focusing on Jungkook with unwavering attention. What is it, sir? Jungkook exhaled deeply before speaking. I need a wife, but not just any wife. I want you to find someone who meets my criteria. Lee's eyebrows raised slightly, though he maintained his composure. What criteria, sir? She must be attractive, unattached, and a virgin, Jungkook said bluntly, his tone devoid of hesitation. Lee frowned slightly, processing the unusual request. With all due respect, sir, finding someone with such specific criteria might take time and unconventional methods. That's why I'm asking you. I don't care where you look, even if it's in places like nightclubs or Jungkook paused, his voice lowering rings. Lee hesitated for a moment before responding. And once I find her, sir? Jungkook smirked faintly, his expression cold. I'll marry her under contract. It's only to meet the will's conditions. Once everything's settled, we'll part ways, and she'll be well compensated. Sir, Lee began cautiously. Are you sure there isn't another way? Perhaps someone closer to your circle? Jungkook's gaze hardened. Lee, I don't have the time or patience for traditional courtship. This isn't about love, it's about business. And I've never failed in business. Lee nodded slowly, though a trace of reluctance lingered in his eyes. Understood, sir. I'll begin the search immediately. Do you have a deadline? As soon as possible, Jungkook said curtly. And Lee, make sure this stays between us. Not a word to anyone. You know the consequences if this leaks. You can trust me, Mr. Jian, Lee assured him before standing and leaving the room. Once alone again, Jungkook leaned back in his chair, his gaze returning to the city outside the window. Marrying for business, he muttered with a sardonic smile. Dad, you really knew how to make my life difficult. Two days later, it was late afternoon, and the atmosphere in Yin's house had drastically changed. Her uncle, Bomsik, looked battered. He was sitting slumped in a chair, trying to endure the pain that kept tormenting him. On the other side, Yin was shocked to see her uncle in such a helpless condition. At the door, two large men from the debt collection group stood with cold expressions. They glared at Bomsik with eyes full of anger. Not far from them, Yin was squeezed between them, her hand being forcibly pulled. Uncle, uncle. What happened? Yin shouted, her body trembling in fear. She had just returned from the calf where she worked. Bomsik tried to raise his shaking hand, attempting to offer Yin some comfort, despite the pain racking his body. I'm sorry, Yin. I, I tried, but they, they didn't give us any more chances. One of the debt collectors looked at Yin with a sharp gaze. We've been patient enough. Two days ago, we gave you a chance. And now, the time is up. One of the men pulled Yin closer, taking her away from her uncle. Don't, don't take her, shouted Jia, Yin's aunt, running toward them in panic. We will pay, we promise. The man merely smirked, then turned to Bomsik. Money doesn't come from empty promises, Bomsik. Your time is up. He then turned back and stepped closer to Yin. Take this girl, he commanded, his voice merciless. Please no, I beg you, let me stay. Her voice was barely audible, but it had no effect on the man. Bomsik struggled to stand, his body trembling but he tried with all his might to stop them. Please, don't take her. What do we need to do for you to stop? He pleaded, his voice full of desperation. The man paused for a moment, then looked at Bomsik with a sly grin. Your time is over, Bomsik. No more negotiations. Yin thrashed around, trying to break free from the grip of the man, but her efforts were in vain. With heavy steps, she was pushed into the car, while Bomsik and Jia could only watch with broken hearts. Two days later, Jungkook was immersed in his work, the sound of keyboard clicks filling the room. The faint sound of knocking broke the silence, pulling him from his thoughts. He glanced at the door, 
his expression calm but authoritative. Come in, he said curtly. Lee, his ever-reliable secretary, stepped inside, holding a tablet and a stack of photos in his hand. Bowing slightly, he placed the photos neatly on Jungkook's desk. Mr. Jian, here are the five candidates I've shortlisted based on your criteria. Please take a look and make your selection, Lee said politely. With a soft sigh, Jungkook picked up the photos, flipping through them nonchalantly. However, as his eyes landed on the third photo, they widened slightly in surprise. His usually cold demeanor softened, replaced by a brief flash of emotion. Park Yin, he murmured, almost inaudibly. Lee raised an eyebrow, curious about his boss's reaction. Do you know her, sir? Jungkook studied the photo closely, his mind racing back to three years ago. Park Yin was a fellow student at his university, a natural beauty known for her modesty and intelligence. Although their interactions had been minimal, she had left a lasting impression. She went to the same university as me, Jungkook replied simply, placing her photo on top of the stack. Without hesitation, he said, choose her. I don't need to see the others. Lee looked slightly taken aback by Jungkook's swift decision. Are you certain, Mr. Jian? You haven't reviewed the other candidates yet. I said what I said, Jungkook replied firmly, his tone brooking no argument. Park Yin is my choice. Arrange a meeting with her immediately. Lee nodded, understanding. There was no point in arguing. Understood, sir. I'll handle it right away. As Lee exited the office, Jungkook leaned back in his chair, gazing at Yin's photo once more. A faint smile played on his lips, a rare sight. Park Yin, he whispered, his voice tinged with a mix of intrigue and determination. I never thought we'd cross paths again. The following evening, Yin sat on the floor of the luxurious hotel room, her hands trembling. She still couldn't process how she had ended up in this situation. The door was locked from the outside, and two burly guards stood vigilantly just beyond it. Her eyes darted around the room, a pristine sofa, an elegant chandelier, and a polished coffee table. None of it brought her any comfort, instead, it only heightened her unease. Suddenly, the door swung open, making Yin flinch. A muscular man with a stern face entered the room. He strode towards her, stopping a few feet away. You're lucky, he began, his voice cold and detached. You've only been here for two days, and someone has already offered to pay a hefty sum for you. Yin's breath hitched as fear flashed across her face. What? What do you mean? Who would pay for me? I don't even know anyone like that. Her voice wavered, laced with desperation. The man smirked, crouching slightly to look her in the eye. Does it matter who? The fact is, you're free as soon as he arrives. But make no mistake, you'll belong to him from that moment forward. So, you'd better start being grateful. I don't want this. Yin shouted, her voice breaking. I never asked for any of this. Let me go. The man's expression darkened, his smirk fading. Listen, girl, if it weren't for him, you'd be in a far worse situation right now. So stop fighting and accept your fate. Tears spilled down Yin's cheeks as despair consumed her. The man straightened up, heading for the door. Before leaving, he threw one last glance over his shoulder. Get ready, he'll be here soon, he said, his tone final. The door slammed shut, leaving Yin alone with her spiraling thoughts. She hugged her knees tightly, her body shaking uncontrollably. Who's coming for me? She whispered to herself, her voice trembling. What's going to happen to me? All she could do was wait, the silence of the room pressing down on her like a heavyweight. 30 minutes later, the hotel room door slowly creaked open, the sound of its hinges breaking the tense silence in the room. Yin, seated in the corner, flinched at the noise. Her eyes widened as a man entered the room. Her body stiffened, but her initial shock quickly morphed into a mix of relief and confusion as she recognized the figure. Jungkook, she whispered unconsciously, her voice barely audible even to herself. The man, standing tall with a cold, unreadable expression, locked his eyes on Yin. It was Jungkook, the same Jungkook she remembered from university. Relief flickered through her for a moment, at least he was someone she knew, not a stranger. But at the same time, waves of embarrassment and awkwardness crashed over her. How could this be happening? How could she meet Jungkook again in such an inappropriate situation? Her mind raced back three years, to when she'd impulsively confessed her feelings to him, only to be coldly and bluntly rejected. Jungkook had been infamous for his icy demeanor, especially towards women, leaving a small scar on Yin's then innocent heart. So, you're the one who paid for me? Yin finally gathered the courage to speak, though her voice trembled. Slowly, she stood up, attempting to steady her emotions. Why? What do you want from me? 
Jungkook didn't answer immediately. His eyes scanned the room briefly before returning to her. His expression remained calm, giving nothing away. Taking a step closer, he caused Yin to unconsciously step back. Sit down, Jungkook said, at last, his tone low but commanding. We need to talk. But, sit, Park Yin, he cut her off, his sharp gaze silencing her. Reluctantly, Yin obeyed and sat back on the sofa. Jungkook took a seat across from her, his presence radiating an authority that only added to the room's tension. I know this is confusing for you, Jungkook began, his voice now steadier, though still cold, but I'm not here for the reason you might think. Yin swallowed hard, trying to summon the courage to ask more. Then, why? Why are you doing this? Jungkook's eyes bored into hers, making her feel as though she were being judged. Because I need you, he said simply. That response only left Yin more bewildered. Need me? Need me for what? Jungkook, this is all too strange. You know I can't pay the debt. So what do you mean? Jungkook took a deep breath before replying. This isn't about your debt. I have my own reasons, and I'll explain them later. For now, just trust me when I say this is the best solution for you. Yin could only stare at him, her mind spinning. Everything was happening too fast, too absurdly. Yet behind Jungkook's cold, sharp demeanor, there was something oddly reassuring. Even after their history, she couldn't shake the desire to understand what lay behind his decision. Five minutes later, Yin stared at Jungkook in disbelief. His earlier words still echoed in her mind like a never-ending loop. Marriage? A contract marriage? Until I give birth to your child? She thought, still struggling to process everything. Jungkook had laid out his intentions, but it all still felt surreal. You must be joking, Yin murmured, her voice barely above a whisper. I never joke about such things. Jungkook replied coolly, with no hint of humor. His cold gaze bore into hers, making her feel even more trapped. I've paid a significant amount for you. From this moment on, you're mine. Yin bit her lip, a whirlwind of shame, anger, and confusion swirling inside her. I can't do this. Jungkook, this is insane. You can't force me. Oh, but I can. Jungkook cut her off firmly, his tone leaving no room for argument. You don't have a choice. Park Yin, I saved you from a far worse fate. If I hadn't paid for you, you know what would have happened. Those words brought back memories of the rough men who had taken her here and their chilling threats. Her body trembled as fear once again gripped her, though she still couldn't fully accept Jungkook's proposition. But marriage? A child? You know I can't agree to that. Yin protested, despite knowing her arguments held little weight against Jungkook's power in this situation. Jungkook sighed deeply, his expression remaining calm but authoritative. Listen to me, I'm not doing this on a whim. I have my reasons. This marriage is temporary, only until you give birth to my child. After that, I'll ensure you and your family are taken care of. You will be free to leave, with no further obligations. Why me? Yin asked, her voice tinged with desperation. Her eyes searched his face for answers. Why me? Jungkook, you could have chosen anyone. Why not one of the other girls in those photos? She was genuinely confused by Jungkook's reasoning, even though he had already explained it clearly earlier. Jungkook was silent for a moment, as if carefully choosing his words. Because I know you, he finally said. I know you won't cause trouble, and I know you'll do what needs to be done to protect your family. And, he hesitated, his gaze briefly softening. There's no one else more suitable. His response only deepened. Yin's confusion. She stared at him, her emotions a mix of disbelief and frustration. But before she could say anything else, Jungkook stood from his seat. I've made my decision. There's no need for you to overthink this, he said firmly. Pack your things. You're coming with me from now on. I'll make sure you're placed in a proper home. I don't want to, Yin replied, her voice shaking. But there was a clear note of fear in her tone. Jungkook's sharp gaze silenced her again. Park Yin, he said softly but with undeniable authority. Since the moment I paid for you, you're mine and my responsibility. And I do not accept rejection. Now, get up and get ready. Reluctantly, Yin rose to her feet. She knew resistance would only worsen the situation. But deep down, she vowed to find a way out of this, no matter what it took. As the car smoothly cruised along the streets of Seoul, the atmosphere between Jungkook and Yin felt slightly awkward. Jungkook broke the silence with his usual tone, flat yet serious. When we get home, it won't just be the two of us, Jungkook began, his eyes still focused on the road ahead. My sister Minji will be there. She's in her third year of high school. Yin nodded slowly, trying to absorb the information he just shared. Jungkook continued, his voice softening a little. Besides Minji, there's Hooning Kai and Chaewen. They're my cousins, older brother and sister. They've been living with me for the past five years because they're orphans. 
Jungkook's voice had a somber tone when he mentioned that their parents died in the same accident as mine. Yin glanced at Jungkook for a moment, sympathy in her eyes, but she didn't say anything. She knew this wasn't the right time to bring up painful memories. And then there's Sakura. Jungkook continued. She's another cousin. Her parents live in Bizen, but she chose to stay here two years ago after working for my company. Yin fell silent, trying to imagine what it would be like living in a new house with so many people, none of whom she knew. However, amidst her uncertainty, she felt a small sense of relief knowing the house wouldn't just be occupied by herself and Jungkook. At least there would be others around who might make the place feel warmer. All my cousins work at my company, Jungkook said. And even though Minji isn't their biological sister, they treat her like one. Yin looked ahead, still processing all the information. I understand, she replied quietly. Jungkook glanced at her for a moment before returning his attention to the road. I just want you to know, be kind to all of them. They're like family to me now. They're important to me, and I don't want any issues at home. Yin nodded obediently. I'll do that, she replied briefly. She knew that even though they were in an unwanted situation, she had to try to adapt to this new environment, at least for the time being. After a few seconds of silence, Jungkook spoke again, his voice firmer this time. We won't be sharing a room. Yin turned to look at him slightly surprised. I don't want any feelings to develop between us, considering this is just a contract marriage. Yin lowered her gaze, feeling a bit disappointed hearing that, even though she knew it shouldn't come as a surprise. This was all just about fulfilling obligations, not love. There was no space for feelings or any greater hope. Jungkook continued without waiting for Yin's reaction. I don't have a religion, he said plainly. What about you? Yin hesitated for a moment before responding. I don't have a religion either. Then we don't need to do any rituals to become husband and wife, Jungkook added. We just need an official certificate from the government. My secretary will take care of everything. Since this is just a contract marriage, there's no need for a celebration or any ceremony. Hearing those words, Yin felt an emptiness wash over her heart. Everything seemed so cold and organized, with no trace of warmth or emotion. But what could she do other than accept this reality? So, there's nothing to celebrate? Yin asked quietly, almost in a whisper, even though she already knew the answer. No need, Jungkook replied briefly. This is just a formality. Yin could only lower her head, a feeling of sadness enveloping her. There was nothing she could do except follow the path that Jungkook had set. When they arrived at the house, the atmosphere felt different. Everyone was already gathered in the living room, waiting for Jungkook and Yin. As soon as the car stopped in front of the door, Jungkook got out first and opened the door for Yin. They walked together toward the living room. Inside, Jungkook looked at the family members present. Minji sat on the couch with a wide smile. Hooning Kai and Chaewin were chatting in the corner, while Sakura sat alone. Everyone turned their attention as Jungkook and Yin entered. This is Yin, Jungkook began in his usual flat yet clear tone, my fiancé. Minji immediately stood up from the couch and approached them with an enthusiastic smile. Oh, so this is my future sister-in-law? I've heard so much about you from my brother. I'm so glad to finally meet you. Minji greeted warmly, her eyes sparkling with excitement. Yin offered a small smile, feeling slightly relieved by Minji's friendly reception. It's nice to meet you, Minji, Yin replied softly, trying to match the girl's warmth. Hooning Kai and Chaewin quickly turned their attention to Yin as well. Hooning Kai gave her a polite nod and said, It's a pleasure to meet you, Yin, with a warm smile. Chaewin, standing next to him, also smiled kindly at her. The warm reception made Yin feel at ease. However, across the room, Sakura remained silent, watching them with an unreadable expression. Her silence stood out sharply against the other's enthusiasm, creating a subtle tension in the air. Not long after, Jungkook instructed a maid to escort Yin to her bedroom on the second floor. The maid complied, and Yin followed her upstairs at a slow pace, feeling slightly awkward about staying in a house that was entirely new to her. Meanwhile, back in the living room, Jungkook addressed his family with a serious gaze. Listen everyone, he said firmly. Do not create any trouble with Yin. Even if she's my contract wife, I don't want any conflicts or issues in this house. Minji, who had been waiting to speak, finally chimed in. But why does it have to be a contract marriage brother? Why not just marry her for real? Wouldn't that be better? Jungkook let out a sigh, his sharp eyes fixing on Minji. I have no interest in getting married, Minji, he replied firmly. I don't want to be tied down by a real marriage. This is just a business arrangement, and I don't want the complications of having a wife. Minji looked at him with a mix of disappointment and frustration, but she knew it was pointless to argue with her brother. His stubbornness was something she had learned to live with. In the corner of the room, 
Sakura let out a long sigh. Internally, jealousy burned within her. She had harbored feelings for Jungkook for years, even since they were children. She knew how cold and resolute Jungkook could be, yet she had never stopped hoping that someday he would see her differently. Especially since she was only adopted into the family, she allowed herself to dream of something more between them. The problem was that Jungkook had never seen her as more than just his cousin. That reality kept her from confessing her feelings to him. And now, with Yin's sudden presence in their lives, the situation felt even more hopeless. The next day, Jungkook's secretary completed all the necessary documents for Jungkook and Yin's marriage, officially making them husband and wife in the eyes of the law. That evening, Jungkook decided to celebrate with the household by hosting a small barbecue party in the backyard. Everyone gathered, including Yin. However, as the night went on, she started to feel uncomfortable as Jungkook and the others began to get drunk. The only ones left sober were Yin and Minji, as Jungkook had forbidden Minji from drinking. Since Yin had never been used to drinking, she and Minji eventually decided to head to their rooms, leaving the others to continue the festivities. Yin had just stepped out of the bathroom in her bedroom. She walked over to her bed and lay down, letting the quiet night envelop her. But suddenly, the door to her room opened without warning. Her eyes widened as she saw the man entering without knocking. Jungkook walked in and locked the door behind him. He had instructed Yin earlier not to lock her door, which now made her uneasy. Swallowing hard, she instinctively pulled the blanket up to cover herself. Why is Jungkook here? She thought nervously. Jungkook continued his stride, stopping at the edge of the bed. He looked down at Yin with an expression that was hard to describe. His gaze wasn't sharp or cold, but soft and weary. Yin quickly realized that Jungkook was drunk. Jungkook, she called softly, but he didn't respond. Instead, he began unbuttoning his shirt one by one. Yin's anxiety spiked. Was this his way of saying they were going to consummate their marriage tonight? Jungkook slowly climbed onto the bed and tugged the blanket away from her. Moving closer, he leaned in as if to kiss her. But Yin placed her hands on his chest, stopping him. Jungkook, you're drunk, she whispered, her voice trembling with nerves. I am drunk, he admitted, his voice low, but I know what I'm doing. Without waiting, Jungkook pressed his lips to hers. Yin's eyes fluttered shut. This was their first kiss, but she couldn't help feeling disappointed that it was happening while he was intoxicated. The kiss deepened, and soon Jungkook positioned himself above her, ready to proceed further. Yin panicked, her heart racing as she realized what was about to happen. She wasn't ready for this, and the fear of pain overwhelmed her. Please, Jungkook. Not yet, she begged, tears spilling down her cheeks as she pushed against his chest. But Jungkook, overcome with desire, didn't stop. Her quiet sobs turned into louder cries, catching his attention. Jungkook, please, she whimpered, her tears streaming. The pain was evident in her voice, and it finally made Jungkook pause. He looked down at her tear-streaked face, his expression softening. For a moment, they just stared at each other, Yin's pleading eyes meeting Jungkook's conflicted gaze. Did he really not care about her feelings? So what do you want me to do? Care if you're in pain? He asked coldly, his voice laced with frustration. Just wait, please wait, she pleaded through her tears. She clutched his shoulders tightly, begging for some reprieve. She wanted him to understand that this was her first time, and she wasn't used to any of this. She needed him to be patient. Jungkook remained silent. His gaze lingered on her tear-stained face, which silently begged him for mercy. Just a moment, she whispered again, her voice trembling as fresh tears rolled down her cheeks. Letting out a sharp sigh, Jungkook finally relented. Though he was tipsy, he was still aware enough to grasp the gravity of the situation. He leaned back slightly, and instead of proceeding, he used his f stud. Yin flinched at first, her tears subsiding as she tried to process what was happening. To her surprise, Jungkook was being careful, a sign that he cared more than she had initially thought. Their eyes met, and for the first time that night, Yin saw a flicker of tenderness in his gaze. Cry some more, hum? Jungkook whispered into her ear his voice low and teasing. But instead of crying, Yin let out a soft Within minutes, she felt ready. Jungkook leaned in closer, pressing his lips near her ear. His voice was quiet but commanding. Let's continue, he murmured before resuming his actions, this time fully. The morning arrived. Yin, who had been sleeping soundly, slowly opened her eyes. Her room was still dimly lit, but streaks of sunlight began to creep through the curtains. The morning air felt chilly, and her body was so weak that she wanted nothing more than to stay in bed all day. As she lay there, Yin began to reflect on what had happened the night before, the reason her body felt so drained now. Her heart started racing as flashes of every moment with Jungkook the previous night replayed in her mind. 
Sister, can I come in? Yin jolted a pride at the sound of Minji's voice outside the door. Still groggy and wrapped in her blanket, she barely had time to react before her sister-in-law opened the door, stepping inside in her school uniform. Good morning, Minji greeted her brightly. Yin swallowed hard, her face heating up with embarrassment. She was still undressed beneath the blanket. Minji, however, seemed oblivious as she walked in, followed by a maid carrying a tray. The tray held two bowls of oatmeal topped with fresh fruit and two glasses of milk. Sister, let's have breakfast together, Minji said cheerfully, approaching Yin's bed. Brother Jungkook told me to bring you breakfast and keep you company while eating. He and everyone else already left, looks like they overslept and skipped breakfast, Minji explained, sitting on the edge of Yin's bed. Minji tilted her head, noticing that Yin hadn't moved from under the covers. What's wrong sis? Let's eat, she urged. Let's eat, Yin replied hastily, panic creeping into her voice as she realized her situation. But can you face the window for a moment? I need to change clothes, Yin said, though the truth was that she hadn't put on anything yet. Oh, Minji exclaimed suddenly, making Yin flinch. I forgot, last night was your first night with my brother, right? Yin's eyes widened in shock, disbelief written all over her face. Minji beamed at her, completely unbothered. You're too young to say things like that, Yin scolded, trying to deflect. I'm in high school, Minji shot back, frowning at being called a child. Still too young, now, go face the window, Yin said, waving her hand to turn Minji away. With a dramatic sigh, Minji finally obeyed. Yin quickly climbed out of bed and went to her wardrobe, grabbing the first top and bottom she could find. She dressed as fast as she could. All done? Minji asked. All done, Yin replied, watching Minji turn around to face her. Minji chuckled softly. We're both girls, you know, she teased as she returned to the nightstand to retrieve the breakfast tray. Yin managed a small smile, still embarrassed about the earlier situation. When Minji made a move to climb onto the bed, Yin stopped her. Let's eat on the sofa instead. It's clean, Yin suggested. Is the bed dirty? Minji asked, frowning in confusion. Yin swallowed hard, unsure how to respond to her curious sister-in-law. Oh right, Minji said, a knowing look dawning on her face. It's because of your first night, isn't it? Yin's cheeks burned as she quickly led Minji to the sofa. You said everyone else has left? She asked, trying to change the subject. Yes, they've all gone, Minji confirmed. Yin fell silent, her mind wandering. Jungkook hadn't had breakfast because he woke up late. Was he also tired from last night? Was he feeling better after his drunken state? She couldn't help but feel a pang of concern. So, how was your first night with my brother? Minji's sudden question nearly made Yin choke on her oatmeal. Hey, you're too young to ask about that, Yin said firmly. It's sex education. I just want to learn, Minji said with a playful grin. Yin couldn't help but laugh and shake her head. The two continued eating in companionable silence. As Yin took a spoonful of oatmeal, her thoughts drifted back to the previous night. Her emotions had been a whirlwind, like riding a roller coaster. Despite her initial fears, she found a small sense of comfort in how Jungkook had treated her with care in the end. A spark of hope flickered in her heart, though she wasn't sure if it would lead to the happiness she longed for. In the kitchen, Yin was sitting and chatting casually with the maids. Suddenly, the sound of a car pulling up and a door opening caught her attention. Looking over, she saw a woman in office attire walking into the house. Their eyes met briefly, and Sakura hesitated before entering further. You're back already? Yin asked. Sakura headed toward a drawer in the family room. Yeah, I forgot to grab one of Jungkook's files, she replied. She began sorting through the documents in the drawer, searching for what she needed. Seeing this, Yin quickly got to work in the kitchen. She remembered that Jungkook hadn't had time for breakfast earlier and decided to pack a meal for him to take to work. Yin hurried down the stairs carrying a small bag in her hand, trying to catch up with Sakura, who was already walking toward the door with a folder in hand. Sakura? Yin called. Sakura stopped and turned around, looking at Yin curiously. What's up? She asked. I wanted to ask a favor. Could you give this to Jungkook? Yin said, extending the bag towards Sakura. Sakura raised an eyebrow, taking the bag and peeking inside. Minji mentioned that Jungkook didn't have time for breakfast. Please give this to him so he can eat at work, Yin explained. Sakura blinked in surprise, her expression a mix of disbelief and curiosity. You are such a kind person, she said softly, a small smile forming on her lips. Huh, what do you mean? Yin asked, confused by Sakura's comment. I mean, even though you're only married to Jungkook in a contract, you're still so nice to him, trying to win his heart. Yin froze, her breath hitching. She stared at Sakura, 
whose smile had turned bittersweet. Let's be real, Sakura continued, her voice tinged with sarcasm. Last night, Jungkook probably didn't care about you, right? Just a small celebration, and then he showed up to do that before leaving you behind again. Yet, here you are, still looking out for him. Yin's eyes widened as Sakura's words sank in. Was this girl trying to stir up conflict between them? Well, I'm heading out, Sakura said, turning to leave. But before she could take more than a few steps, Yin's voice stopped her. You're Jungkook's cousin, right? Sakura frowned, turning back to face her. Huh? Yin stood her ground, her gaze steady and serious. Since you're his cousin, can I ask you for a favor? Please stay out of my marriage with my husband. Sakura's eyes widened, shocked by Yin's firm words. Marriage? Jungkook only married you for a contract. There's no real marriage between the two of you, Sakura retorted immediately. Yin's gaze hardened. She had just asked Sakura to stay out of her business, yet here she was, interfering again. You must be upset, Sakura, Yin said, stepping closer to the other woman. Upset? About what? Sakura asked, raising her chin defiantly, confidence flashing in her eyes. Yin gave her a small, bittersweet smile, her eyes filled with a mix of pity and resolve. You must be upset because, no matter the reason Jungkook did what he did, the woman he married is still me, not you. The one who is his wife is me, not you because you're his cousin. Sakura's eyes widened further, her breath hitching as she stared at Yin, trying to process her words. Don't forget to give the food to your cousin, Sakura, Yin said calmly before turning and walking away, leaving Sakura standing there. Sakura gripped the bag tightly, her knuckles turning white as she watched Yin's retreating figure ascend the staircase. Seething inwardly, she muttered curses under her breath before turning to leave for the office. Meanwhile, at the office, Jungkook was engrossed in his work. He paused briefly, exhaling deeply as he reached for a glass of water on his desk. He hadn't had time for breakfast earlier and was still undecided about what to ask the office boy to get for him. Come in. The door opened, and Sakura entered. Jungkook, here are the files, she said, placing them on his desk. Jungkook nodded, accepting the documents. His eyes then shifted to the small bag Sakura was holding. What's that? He asked. Oh, this. Sakura hesitated, glancing at the meal container inside the bag. She swallowed hard, momentarily lost in thought. It's food. You didn't have breakfast this morning, so I brought it for you, she said, handing the bag to Jungkook. He accepted it and looked inside. Perfect timing he said, visibly hungry. Sakura smiled as she watched him take out the meal container and a spoon. Thanks, Sakura, Jungkook said, flashing her a small smile. Sakura nodded and returned his smile before excusing herself and leaving the office. It was already 8 in the evening, and Jungkook had just arrived home. As he walked past the dining room, he noticed that nearly everyone in the house was gathered at the dining table. Already done eating? Jungkook asked. We just finished, brother. Have you eaten? Minji asked, having just finished her dinner alongside Sakura, Huninkai, and Chaewon. Jungkook gave a small smile, despite feeling utterly exhausted. I've already eaten, he replied to his sister. Jungkook continued on his way to his bedroom. He sat on the edge of the bed, exhaling softly as he stretched his sore body. Meanwhile, on the stairs, a woman in a knee-length pajama dress was making her way down. From a distance, Sakura noticed her approaching the stairs. The two briefly locked eyes, but Yin quickly looked away as if uninterested and continued walking. Sakura was startled to realize where the woman was heading. Inside his room, Jungkook turned toward the door after hearing someone knock. It was probably the maid bringing him something to drink. Come in, Jungkook said. For a moment, no one entered, making Jungkook frown. But then, someone finally opened the door, leaving him startled. Standing at the doorway, Yin swallowed nervously. It was her first time entering her husband's bedroom. She quietly closed the door and stood still, staring at Jungkook, who was sitting on the edge of the bed. His expression showed surprise, clearly not expecting Yin to come to his room. What are you doing here? Jungkook asked immediately, his gaze fixed on his wife, who was walking slowly toward him. Yin, dressed in her pajama dress, didn't answer. Instead, she approached him. Looking around, Jungkook's bedroom was possibly the largest in the house much bigger than any other bedroom. Now standing in front of him, Yin watched him as he removed his tie. I just wanted to ask if you ate the lunchbox I prepared for you, Yin said. Lunchbox? Jungkook frowned, causing Yin to swallow nervously. Did Sakura fail to give the lunchbox to Jungkook that morning? You mean the one you left with Sakura? Jungkook asked, recalling it. Yes, Yin replied. I ate it. Jungkook said as he continued taking off his tie, but I didn't know it was from you. Hearing this, 
Yin swallowed hard. Did Sakura not tell Jungkook the lunchbox was from her? Get out. Jungkook ordered suddenly, glaring sharply at her. I never gave you permission to come into this room. Yin remained where she was, facing Jungkook with a seemingly annoyed expression. Not long after, she finally turned and started walking out of the room. But oddly enough, despite asking her to leave, Jungkook grabbed Yin's arm and pulled her back firmly. What? Yin asked looking confused. You barged into my bedroom as if you haven't done anything wrong to me, Jungkook said. Jungkook then walked toward the door, not to open it and push her out, but to lock it from the inside. Yin's eyes widened in shock. Now, satisfy me. Satisfy me first, and then you can leave, Jungkook whispered with a smirk on his face. Yin's heart pounded rapidly. She was further shocked when Jungkook pulled her toward the bed. Swallowing nervously, she tried to steady her breathing as she watched her husband unbutton his shirt one by one. That night, they gave in to each other until they were both exhausted and fell asleep. The next morning, Yin woke up to find her husband already gone. However, she could still smell the faint scent of his cologne, indicating that Jungkook had just left for the office. Once again, she had overslept. Jungkook had left her asleep. Yin's cheeks turned red. Stupid Yin. Jungkook must think I'm a lazy woman. She muttered to herself in frustration. One month later, Yin had just come down the stairs and headed straight to the dining table. Noticing that Jungkook hadn't come out of his room yet, she decided to go straight to his room. Sakura, seeing this, looked annoyed. Yin had been freely going in and out of Jungkook's bedroom several times, and what's worse, Jungkook didn't seem to mind anymore. Without knocking, Yin entered the room and found her husband preparing to put on a tie. Jungkook glanced at her briefly before focusing his attention back on the mirror in front of him. Yin walked slowly toward him, intending to help. She stood in front of Jungkook and reached out to take the tie that was still untied. Let me do it, Yin said softly. Jungkook glanced at her through the mirror's reflection but didn't object. He stayed silent, allowing Yin to tie the knot. Her fingers moved nimbly, though they occasionally trembled slightly from nervousness. Why did you come in without knocking? Jungkook asked suddenly, his tone flat but enough to make Yin flinch. Yin swallowed hard, trying to come up with an excuse. I thought, this would be faster, you're almost late. Jungkook let out a small scoff but didn't say anything further. When Yin finished tying the knot, she stepped back, observing her work while waiting for her husband's reaction. Jungkook glanced at the tie in the mirror and gave a slight nod. Not bad, he commented briefly, making Yin feel a little relieved. Well then, let's have breakfast. The others are already gathered, Yin said to him before they both headed to join the others at the dining table. At the dining table, Yin noticed Minji's plate and asked, why is there still so much food on your plate? Minji turned to her with a smile. I got a second helping. The bread tastes better today. Oh really? Yin replied, and Minji nodded enthusiastically. Yin then glanced at the toast in front of her. It looked delicious, but for some reason, instead of feeling hungry, she felt nauseous. A maid approached, placing a plate in front of Yin, and adding several pieces of toast for her. The sweet aroma of the bread, which she usually loved, now made her stomach churn violently. Yin couldn't hold it back any longer. She quickly covered her mouth as the nausea hit her heart. Everyone at the table looked at her in surprise, including Minji, who was sitting beside her. Sister, what's wrong? Minji asked in a panic. Yin blinked, her nausea growing worse as she kept her hand over her mouth to avoid throwing up at the table. Finally, she stood up from her chair and quickly made her way to the bathroom. Minji started to stand up, intending to follow Yin, but stopped when she heard the sound of a chair moving and saw her brother standing up first and heading toward the bathroom. Minji decided not to follow after all. What's wrong with sister Yin? Minji muttered worriedly, watching from afar. Chaewin overhearing, smiled knowingly. Maybe she's pregnant, she said. Minji's eyes widened. She hadn't thought of that possibility. A wide smile spread across her face. I hope so, she exclaimed, eagerly hoping Chaewin's words were true. Chaewin nodded in agreement, sharing the same hope. Meanwhile, sitting beside her, Sakura clenched the spoon in her hand tightly. Pregnant already? She thought in disbelief. Her feelings were conflicted. Part of her was happy, thinking this might mean Jungkook would divorce Yin once the baby was born. But another part of her doubted it. Would Jungkook really go through with it? In the main bathroom, Yin had just finished dealing with her nausea. She hadn't vomited, but a small amount of liquid had come out. She turned on the faucet and rinsed her mouth. She looked at her reflection in the sink mirror, but then shifted her gaze to the figure of a man standing behind her, watching her intently. Yin turned around to face Jungkook. We're going to the doctor now, Jungkook said firmly. Yin shook her head. She didn't want to trouble Jungkook, who was already dressed for work. I'm fine.
No you need to be checked. If you're pregnant, it's important to handle it properly, Jungkook said, this time with an unyielding tone. Yin was stunned. Pregnant? Could it be true? Her breath caught, and her mind raced. Meanwhile, Jungkook had already pulled out his phone, booking an appointment without waiting for her to argue further. Upon arriving at the hospital, Yin underwent an examination, confirming that she was three weeks pregnant. The doctor immediately prescribed vitamins and advised her to avoid exhaustion. Back at the house, Jungkook noticed Yin entering with a maid. A thought crossed his mind, and he walked toward his wife, Yin. Yin had just passed Jungkook's room when she stopped and turned. She saw her husband approaching and stopping in front of her. For a moment, they both remained silent. Jungkook simply stared at Yin, making her frown in confusion. What's wrong? I'm tired and just want to lie down for a bit, Yin said, breaking the silence. Here, Jungkook said suddenly, moving toward the door of his bedroom and opening it. Yin raised an eyebrow. What do you mean? Just as the doctor said earlier, you're not supposed to be exhausted. From today onward, you'll sleep in my bedroom, no more climbing the stairs, Jungkook explained, leaving Yin startled. In your bedroom? Then where will you sleep? Yin asked. A moment of silence filled the air. Jungkook looked slightly taken aback by the question, while the maid, observing them, smiled faintly. Stop asking questions. Just come in and rest now, Jungkook ordered firmly. Okay, Yin replied, complying. Move all her belongings from upstairs to my bedroom now, Jungkook instructed one of the maids, who nodded immediately. Yes, sir. One hour later. The room was quiet. Yin sat at the edge of the bed, while Jungkook was in the bathroom taking a shower. Yin had been trying to calm her racing heart. She wanted to stay composed, but her body betrayed her, her cheeks burned red, and her mind kept replaying the fact that Jungkook was letting her stay in his room for the sake of her and the baby's health. What shocked her even more was that Jungkook hadn't switched rooms with her, he planned to sleep here too, with her. Suddenly, the sound of the bathroom door opening made Yin look up, catching sight of Jungkook standing in the distance. He had just stepped out shirtless after his shower. Yin swallowed hard and quickly averted her gaze. Jungkook however, calmly dressed in his loungewear and climbed onto the bed, leaning against the headboard while using his iPad. It was only 5 p.m. and there was still time to rest before dinner. Jungkook glanced at Yin, who still sat awkwardly on the edge of the bed. Aren't you going to rest? You said you were tired, Jungkook asked. Yin swallowed nervously. Jungkook, am I really allowed to sleep here starting today? She asked, wanting to confirm again. Jungkook sighed. Why are you still asking? Haven't you slept here before? Yin's cheeks flushed instantly. It was true, she had slept here before but only because Jungkook had called her for intimacy, not for normal sleeping arrangements like this. All right, Yin said softly, lying down beside him. She stole a glance at him as he sat beside her. Jungkook, she called softly, earning a hum in response. Do you know that Sakura is actually in love with you? Yin wasn't sure where her courage to ask came from. Jungkook turned to look at her. Why, did she do something to you? Yin nodded. She's not like the others. She's always been cold to me. I know our marriage is just a contract, but she even mocked me outright. Jungkook frowned. When did this happen? When I first came here, after our first night, I gave her a packed lunch for you, and she mocked me then. Since then, she's always treated me poorly, it's like we're enemies in this house. Jungkook exhaled deeply and returned his focus to his iPad. Don't mind her, just rest now. Yin obeyed, and before long, she drifted off to sleep. Two hours later, Jungkook heard a knock at the door, followed by a maid's voice informing him that dinner was ready. Before leaving, Jungkook glanced back, seeing his wife sleeping soundly. He paused momentarily, contemplating what to do, but eventually, he left the room and closed the door quietly behind him. In the dining room, Jungkook joined his sister and the others, who were already seated, chatting amongst themselves. Has Sister Yin been called? Minji asked one of the maids who nodded in response. Minji frowned when Yin didn't appear. Is she asleep? I'll go check, she said, standing up. As Minji moved toward the stairs, Jungkook called her name from the dining table. She turned puzzled. What? Jungkook hesitated briefly, noting the curious stares of everyone present. He hadn't told anyone yet that Yin was now staying in his bedroom. From today onward, Yin will sleep in my bedroom, Jungkook announced. Minji gasped in surprise, as did everyone else at the table. You're sharing a room? Minji asked. Jungkook nodded, meeting their stunned expressions. But why? Sakura asked, the most shocked of them all. Why is Yin sleeping in your bedroom, Jungkook? The doctor advised her to avoid exhaustion, and I don't want her tiring herself out by climbing the stairs, Jungkook explained. She could share a room with Minji. Why does it have to be yours? Sakura protested. 
What's your problem? Minji interjected before Jungkook could reply. It's brother Jungkook's decision where sister Yin sleeps, their husband and wife. It's none of your business. The room fell silent as everyone turned to Minji, whose irritation was evident. It's not that I have a problem, Minji, but... It's his right to decide, and it's their business, not anyone else's, Minji said firmly. Sakura swallowed hard, rendered speechless by Minji's words. Sakura didn't understand any of this. Wasn't Yin just a contract wife whom Jungkook was supposed to divorce? Why was she being treated like a queen? Sakura clenched her fists, her gaze locking with Jungkook's. Their eyes met in a silent battle of wills, the dining room atmosphere thick with tension. Finally, Jungkook broke the silence. Sakura, go back to Bizen tomorrow. Everyone was shocked by his words, especially Sakura. Why? Jungkook, are you kicking me out because of that woman? She asked, her voice trembling. Jungkook's gaze hardened. From the start, I warned everyone not to cause trouble for her, yet you've been openly hostile toward her. Sakura let out a bitter laugh. Why are you defending her? She's just your contract wife. Jungkook's tone turned sharp. Have you forgotten your place here? I make the rules in this house. When I say don't cause problems for her, I mean it. Have you fallen in love with her, Jungkook? Aren't you supposed to divorce her? Sakura pressed, her emotions boiling over. Jungkook's reply was firm. I won't divorce her. Everyone was stunned by his declaration, especially Sakura. Why? She demanded. Because I won't separate my child from their mother. Just admit you've fallen for her. Sakura cried, her emotions spilling over. Jungkook stared at her sharply. Even if I have fallen in love with her, that's none of your business. What matters is that you must leave this house tomorrow. I don't like anyone in this house defying me or breaking the rules I've set. Sakura's heart shattered upon hearing Jungkook's words. Unable to contain her emotions, she abruptly stood and ran to her room. She had no choice but to prepare herself because, starting tomorrow, she would no longer be welcome in this house.